Hello, Nima. Hi, David. Good afternoon. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Okay. Samir will not be able to join today. Um, so, and Pritesh will join in 10, 15 minutes. I'm expecting Milind should be here. Let me check. Let me update the agenda. I see that Yeah, he had a number of items there that I was going to yeah. cover on his cover on his behalf. Because it's, you know, there it's the middle of the night. It's like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, 12 a.m. there. Yeah. I don't know why my tasting is not working. Hello. Hi, Milan. Hey. Your name, uh. Hi. Uh, David, do you want to go ahead and cover what uh, he has uh, taken, like in the agenda? Yeah. Those two yeah. items, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Let me, uh, I can share out my screen and we can go from there. Um, okay. So <clears throat> um, first thing on the list is just talking about um, of RC1 stories, issues. Um, this is a simplified list, but I know we kind of roughly covered it yesterday, but we did, per the feedback uh, a couple of days ago, we did break out the estimations for the trust store CLI um, and took out the, the actual policy work because I, I agree that's going to probably be a lot a lot harder, a lot more tricky for that part um, and less less essential for, I think, an RC1 experience. Um, you know, I think just being able to add add remove certificates into the trust store, I think is um, it's a little it needs to be relatively easy um, and trying to manually find a directory and stuff makes it makes it hard. So I think this will help. And uh, I believe Shiwei's team um is is actually working on this right now i have to double check but yeah so um yeah and then the you know just cozy is basically done we're just other waiting on reviews and any feedback address feedback um i think the cost estimation should be put in for the review it's 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 non-trivial um it okay. is probably one to two week for for reviews as we merge into mainline. I understand that a round of reviews has been done uh, by Shiva's team as they have been developing it, uh, but there's additional reviews as we are merging it into main. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could update that. 
in terms of yeah, small number. Put a comment in there. Okay. Um, let's see. Re enable timestamping for signing and verification. Uh, the note here is this needs crypto crypto experience expertise. Um, and I'm not sure let's see if we even have. This uh, this was one of the item that um, I think uh, Shiva was uh, discussing in the last meeting whether okay. this need to be is it uh, <clears throat> is it an item that is in scope for our CBAM? So there were like four parts to it, right? Uh, as you are uh, yeah. presenting, the first two part was not the concern, but the last two part was the concern. Uh, concern in the sense in terms of the complexity and the timeline. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that needs the TSA, the timestamping needs some, um, maybe we can cover it again on Monday. Uh, okay, more technical. I think at, at a minimum, we can, we can, we can start generating TSA signatures and including it in the signatures, uh, but the verification code is what needs to be updated. Um, okay. Okay. Decide, so kind of. Yeah. So so what if so if I summarize what you're saying, like kind of one and two, we could we could light it up, but it may be that three and four has to be potentially into RC two type of thing because of how long it takes. Yeah. Okay. So, so Milind one and two will be part of uh, RC one, but three and four we can. We yeah, can... I need I oh, need Shiva's okay. feedback there. We we should we should discuss this further if we can. Okay. Split okay. the okay. work. Okay. 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 Yeah, we can we can uh, pump that to to Monday's discussion. Um, that's fine. One okay. note on the trust store trust policy split that we did. Yeah. Uh, users still have to do both steps, right? And just making sure we we understand that they have to set up trust store, mm -hmm. which is a more of one time setup policy. You could keep on changing based on what set of artifacts you consume, and if you want to make like targeted policies, etc. So. Um, I think it sounds fine that we are taking an incremental approach, but from an end user experience, both steps have to be done before uh, notation can successfully verify artifact. So what you're trying to tell us, uh, you can still have the trust store and trust policy uh, separately in the phased approach, but when it is... Uh, Users the end do, user they need huh? to do both steps. So we would have, based on the current plan, we would have commands for trust store hmm. that allows them to manipulate the trust store without needing to understand the directory structure. Post that, they still need to write up the policy. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if we can have, uh, like as an intermediate step, just kind of a like a default policy that trusts what, the certificates are in the trust store. That um, we can talk about that. Usually, that ends up being a very permissive policy. And if you put examples like that, it it just gets copied over and gets used because it allows users to get started without critically thinking about what they really want and how they right. want to write that policy. Well, mm -hmm. right, and I think that, and I think that. Uh, in the in the state of that, it is a pretty manual uh, state of we're in. I think you know. Yeah. Once like, we make that easier, once we make it easier down the road, then obviously we could go nothing at the base. But when it's a, a handwritten thing, um, yeah, seems to me like we should provide a, a like a more permissive default until we get a better user experience. We can give some examples. We should not install with a permissive policy. <clears throat> so like the, the, the yeah, that, 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 that would be my feedback. 
if the okay, document so, edition so today, do so today let, let's say today we we have the cli which adds um one set of trusted root certificate or certificates um to create a trust policy does somebody have to like copy paste then um yep yeah. JSON so, into the directory to then make it work? Yeah. So uh, I think the thing to understand is notation by default does not trust anything. Right. If you yeah. just install notation and try to verify, it will always say cannot verify. Right. So because, because we haven't established, like unlike say Windows ecosystem or Android, whatever, okay. like there's no standard set of roots yet. We have a separate story to populate some default root certificates with public CAs, that's that definitely not in RC1. So, so that requires customers to put in certificates and set up policy. Uh, and like I'm all for giving the like walkthrough examples, et cetera. We shouldn't install anything by default because again, like removing that default is a breaking okay. change, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So if we don't install anything by default, that's one thing. Well, how can we make it a, a easy experience to, to actually? Yeah. So uh, I think when, yeah, when, when we do the CLI commands, there, there are some ideas around how to make it more intuitive. But I think the, what I've been trying to convey is it is a user decision to understand the policy elements and the, like you can't escape from writing the policy in terms of you don't have to manually write it, but you have to understand the concepts and select specific values. There's no way to get away from that. We can ease it using some CLI experience that looks like a, like a CLI wizard, right? Step one, tell me what is the registry URL you want to use. Step two, we can take inputs we can have some options, et cetera. So we can make it simpler. Users still have to make the choices. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no I, I get it. I mean, I, I just, I'm just, if I, if I think about- um, Like I am policies, let's just, say, right? let's just say like, let's just say signing and uh, ver verifying something from a, from a, a CICD pipeline that, that basically, you know, needs to, you know, install notation from scratch and then, and then try and or orchestrate verifying a container image, right? Yeah. Like that, that by itself is <laughs> with the trust store and trust policy, especially not having a CLI, that's a, that, that's a lot of work and you're not going to go through a UI click based thing to try and Yep. You know. So the, the, definitely, there, there are two ways, right? There's there's an interactive way of setting up policy, and that need not be the only option. You're right. You want you want commands that you can write in a script that sets up your initial policies. So so question, Melinda, um, is it like uh, trust store will be completely empty when a uh, when a user is implementing it, or does it come with some default? Currently, it, it does not. Currently, not. the trust or trust policy, everything is empty. Empty. Okay. So, so is it possible that we could, for well, as we're doing the CLI for trust store, that we maybe until we get the trust policy CLI and that that experience flushed out, that we maybe have a switch or something like that for. When somebody sets up the trust store, they they say, you know, add this switch, then the tr the trust policy trusts the search that you just so added. It's a, the issue is it's it's not that straightforward, right? Let's let's do this on Monday. We can do a little bit of walkthrough of the trust store and trust policy, because it's 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 not as straightforward. You need to take user inputs. The trust the trust policy is made up of five four five elements, and you have to make choices there. Yeah. Okay. And you, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I think it'd be good to just to maybe talk through what we could do um, in the in the short term for RC one here as we're as we're getting the you know trust store CLI set in like what we could do that would maybe have a better 
user experience for now um, relating to, to that. So, okay. Um, okay, so do do do. Um, so we are we still are we going to try and target the end of September? Do we have any um, ideas on timeline on this or 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 no on your side? I think we haven't agreed on the scope yet for RC one. Okay. I think we are mostly. Right. I think we are mostly aligned. Uh, okay. The I don't see the diagnostics login in there yet. Uh, there was an issue for diagnostics login. I updated it with, let me see if I can find that. Yeah. I updated it with, uh, there's an ask for adding more details around what needs to be logged. Let me see if I can find it. Um, okay. Okay, I found it. Uh, let me paste it in the chat. Notation 300. Is it part of RC1? Uh... Yeah, I think this should be part of RC1. Uh, last meeting I covered why having the diagnostic output will be helpful because mm -hmm like this is like freshly baked right you you will have users use it in different scenarios edge cases etc uh, report bugs encounter issues it is difficult to support end users without having diagnostics mm -hmm. input okay why is it not listed in rc1 we can do it offline no, we talked about it, it. It was under debate, right? We were talking so what, about uh, it on Monday. Yeah. So, so what? Um, who who would be working on this? Uh, would it be someone on your side or on our side? Is what we had it? What we had in mind, or no idea? I think I no no idea on the allocation yet. Again, we like I I think we haven't done that planning split, etc. Okay. Okay. But I, I I can get some answers on that on Monday. I think we we need to. And do we have an idea of estim estimation on this at all either? Like to add this in, and would it be for every single command or just some? Yeah, we that's should... that's uh, that's what Shiva was uh, wanted to know. Million. Yeah, last sure. So, so yeah. we we need it for commands where there is high complexity, right? Where there is a where there is a bunch of decision trees. Like for example, I, I have some examples here, right? Like for a authentication failure, you need registry authentication failure details so you can know exactly what's going wrong. Uh, the plugin request responses, and then for signing some of the details of when the signature is generated. So we, if we end up generating signatures, which we fail to verify, we know what those details are. And then the verification workflow especially has a bunch of whatever evaluation logic, which is highly branching. So the trust store, which trust store is picked up, which certificate from trust store is picked up, how the yeah. trust policies, yeah, all of those is very useful yeah. to have logging there. Yeah, so so if I, if I inter that makes sense. So if I were to put that into practical terms, I would say the debug option for notation, sign notation, verify, and perhaps the notation logging. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Usually, you have like a debug environment variable which will emit debug wherever supported, and for the specific commands, you can have minus minus debug. I I, I think that would be a fair trade off in my mind because I, I do think that would provide value and hopefully less work in versus doing debug for every single option that's out there. Yeah. And we don't have to complete all of these in the same go. We we could debate. I think at least sign and verify. We could even start with just verify, uh, based on if we want to make a cutoff date, etc. I think there are some options there to say 
in our seven, we'll do a piece of this. So, so actually, we need to list out what are those command line uh, yeah. commands so that we include this parameter, right? The debug. Yeah, which right now is just sign, verify, and login. Those are the huh. commands. Huh. Yeah. So this so is for the example, actual... you don't need it for list, right? Uh, so it's pretty much sign and verify. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Those have the those have complexity or the, those have more chances of things going wrong. Correct. Yeah. Right. Same key certificate. Um, so yeah. So so this. <clears throat> so I, I think that's 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 a fair fair trade off because I I do, I do think. Um, like you said, people need more information um, around what's happening, if there's failures or what's actually going on, and it may address some of the other usability experiences that we have. Um, so I think that's fair. Um, and hopefully that's less work since it's only two, let's say two commands versus all of these, um, I'd imagine. Yeah, I, th I think we can start with sign, verify, login, we can add maybe in RC2. I'll, um, I'll just go ahead and put it on here, but with the, obviously I have the comment down here below and we'll see if we can. If yeah, that that's fine. That's fine. We can, yeah. we can talk about it more on Monday. Monday. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Is there any other thing where you see we're not maybe aligned potentially in terms of RC one scope? Um, I mean, we have. I think Mani, you had automated CLI testing. The CLI. Oh, the the end -end automated. The, yeah, David. The, uh, this is about the testing approach for the RC one feature set, right? The automation oh, okay. CLI testing. Okay. Yeah, I know we have a user story on that. Um, just trying to see. 100, I think, test case automation for. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, Is it P2E? Just put automation. I, I saw an item. Yeah, I see. So yes. Test case automation for CLI commands, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the one, right? Right. Yeah. And I think we have talked about this when we were doing the alpha releases that we, this is a gap that we identified. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we still label this as RC1. So yeah, I think um, I think we're aligned here. I, I, I think we can, we can evolve uh, the test cases over, over time, but I think just getting something in there that's you know that has yep. some Again. something to get us started you know would be would be good okay. yeah i agree like similar to like the core features are sign and verify right so we can start yeah. with coverage there and keep on adding for the other commands as we go on maybe david we can list it out uh, for the monday meeting what is that we are going to have it covered as part of the story in our Siva. Yeah, minimal. Maybe wherever there is uh, debugging, uh, you know, enabled, we can we can try to align. Is it the same places that we need to have the test automation covered as well? Yeah. See, overall, you eventually you want to cover everything. So exactly. Ideally, in this in this parent one, you should say in RC one we'll cover these commands, in RC two we'll cover this, etc. And then by right. GA, GA, you should have Correct. coverage. Correct. So if we have that phased approach timeline, and at least we can work backwards then. Yeah. David. Yeah. So we, we kind of need to have the discussion Monday if possible. Like, okay, we cover one, two, three for RC1, five, six, seven, eight for RC2, and then we can conclude everything in RC3, something like that. We need to come up with that phased approach. Yep. David, you had the link with all the CLI commands, right? Which one is that? Yeah, it's it's in the it's in the meeting notes. Um, but this is the one that was flashed up uh, last time for from uh, Yi. Uh, it's it's on the CLI maturity link here. Okay, got it. 
Okay. So, but uh, but yeah, so this is just a proposal, but it's something, another item I had on the list. I think it's it's good to talk about this as well. Um, so, you know, I, I proposed a while back of like, you know, deciding or putting experimental or whatever and deciding which commands we're trying to really move forward. And so this yeah. is Yi's, Yi's trying to flush that out. Um, okay. And it obviously this is, this is just a rough idea, but um, I think this is helpful for us to try and figure out where we're going and, and scope and stuff. So um, notation cache, uh, the idea here, I mean, we haven't used this in quite a while, but um, the idea here is to, to actually remove it in RC1. Um, so I'll pause, I'll pause there for feedback or comment. I'm not sure what those, what the cache command helped with, maybe managing the cache. So, yeah. But according to E, that is not, is removed as part of RC1, right, David? And it's not included in RC2 and... Uh... Yeah, let's go through this again yeah, on Monday. Right, okay. Because there's okay, there yeah. some questions around the four ones which are removed and which ones should be beta in RC1. So yeah, so cache right now is just listing the signatures in a cache, which I mean, and pruning signatures from a cache. And I don't know if we, I've never used it. I don't know what the like why it got added originally. Um, and what what the real intention of it was okay and the other thing i was looking at this table is a really good uh, starting point right we can also have the actual command and it's uh, sorry about that uh, and it's uh, usage define each parameters in the same table so we'll have more clarity going forward. To yeah, we have we have a we have a markdown doc that has kind of this printed out right now. Um, mm -hmm. So we could, we could compare with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and certainly there needs to be refinement within each of these main commands. But I think this is kind of like well, which kind of core commands do we want to keep or modify or whatever, right? So. Um, so, so I think like another one that I don't know, just I was talking with Ian Finn yesterday that was it was kind of brought up an interesting dialogue is notation list, right? We have notation certificate list, we have notation key list, we have notation plugin list, oh. um, and this the, then we have notation list, and um, it really is notation signature list effectively is what it is. Um, but mm -hmm. the question is, do we really, do, do we, do we plan or do we desire to do a broader, like, listing of artifact things um, or, or not? Um, I, at least an idea that I had was, was having, instead of list, having like notation signature and notation signature list, but then you could also have notation signature, let's say, inspect, right? Um, and so then you would kind of combine, you know, you would have a similar pattern um, to the logic of the, you know, the root of the commands, right? So you have certificate as an object, uh, a signature would be an object, right? A key is an object, and then you would have, you know, list or other things um, there. The only, the only, the only, the only thing that 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 kind of is a little off, right? Is I mean, verify. Obviously, you're verifying a signature, but um, I mean, it's, and I think that of course makes sense. Um, I don't know, but but yeah, what are thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, I see where you're going. So yeah, when you we... see. Or it could be, David, when you say notation list, you have a parameter, whether it is a certificate list or it is a, you know, a key list based on the list. So the command itself need not be isolated, but you can have the parameter to define what is the object, right? Yeah. That's yeah, you could have it in two places. I mean, that's another alternative approach for sure. You could have... Notation list certificate, which is the same as notation certificate list, 
right? You could right. do that. Right, right. It's it, it, it's just it's just whichever way uh, user experience goes with, right? Milind, you have a opinion no, on just, that? No, I was just saying that, that that is why you need the CLI spec in some of these just to drive that discussion and say, okay, this is kind of the mm -hmm. standard way we will do it. Okay. Yeah, the, then the other one, notation push and pull commands. Um, you know, I think the general question is, should notation itself be the kind of core tool that pushes and pulls art artifacts? registry artifacts. Um, I mean, we have ORAS obviously um, that's there, but is that essential to have those things combined, right? Um, we have, yeah, and that's, that's a big, a big question there. Can you repeat that, David? Sorry about that. Well, so notation push and pull, we really haven't been using it or updating it or doing really much of anything with it. Um, mm -hmm. We do push, the signature and we use the ORAS libraries when we do the sign mm -hmm. by default, right? We have the push thing behind the scenes there. Mm -hmm. um, but once we have, let's let's say that once we have the local signing um, experience really flushed out, mm -hmm. like do, you know, um, and somebody wants to then at that point, let's say push or pull artifacts or signatures, does that something we really think notation should be doing in, at its core or not? And I, I mean, this is kind of suggesting no. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to that as well right now. But I, it's up for discussion, right? This is the same thing what Milind will, Milind was talking about, right? I think in OCI spec also we have a push and pull, right? No, this, yeah. this is, yeah. It, it's about. I, I think at this level, it's about like, do you, do you want to use? Notation. Do you want notation to do pull yeah. push automatically, which it will do anyway when we generate signatures and we when we verify. Like, is, is there any utility to providing that as a separate experience? If it does automatically, then what is? The, what that's what. Is, like, yeah. what is the use case yeah. to uh, uh, use it separate? as part of the utility? What is it used for, as a end user, right? Right, exactly. Like what, I mean, just in the, like, what is the, you know, of course there's always like edge use cases, right? But what is the normal like user flow? And, you know, today you can sign verify and it does the push behind the scenes where you don't have to even like think about it or you could tell it to not do that by, you know, putting a switch. But when are you gonna need to or want to possibly use notation to push pull? Um, and that's, I, you know, I don't, I don't have any, um, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I'm more inclined to let the, let's say the ORAS tool be the, the, the which is yeah. far more robust to do all of that kind of work. Right. Um, hmm. but, I, yeah. Um, no, this sounds good. I, I, like I said, probably Monday we should spend dedicated time going through each of these line by line and if there's anything else to discuss on them i had two more items in terms okay. of the overall scope the inspect which is listed here yeah uh, it says inspect not supported new command for key discovery that is i think key discovery has been a contentious topic uh, okay. we should probably talk about it on monday there is there's at a high level i would say there is nothing to discover the, the key is already present in the the public key and the root certificate they are present in the signatures right as a certificate chain in the signature there's the like there's the artifact there's the signature and as part of the signature there is the certificate uh, certificate chain so you have the public keys available as part of the signature. The, the out-of-band process usually is, do I trust this key or not? 
and there's no automated way to do that. You that is where you set up your trust stores, and that's usually managed by different sets of administrators, either at organization or a team level, etc. So that's so, where Verify looks into, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the key discovery, David, do you get what I'm what I'm trying to say? Yeah, well, so you, I mean, I totally get you. You need to, you need to, uh, you need to trust, uh, you need to trust the certificate somehow. Right? Yeah, and, yeah. And you're, yeah. and so, so I, I guess I, I, I think I, I hear what you're saying. I think the, the question is, you know, how can we make it easier to trust, um, something you know you want to trust, right? So let's, let's look at the scenario where, um, there's a, an, an image that's signed that's public in a public registry mm -hmm. and we want to trust the, the content that's signed by that entity in that public registry. It could be AWS, could be Microsoft, right? For those yep. images to run on our own stuff. Well, how, how, how can we make that, let's say a one or a two line kind of command line thing for them to trust that content versus having to go crack open JSON and copy and paste something. No, and download, no it's not know, even down, download stuff and you know so whatever. So I'll, I'll tell you. Usually, or like the simple way of saying this is, you you can you can go to a legitimate website, okay, Docker Hub, any public registry. And there'll be a bunch of bunch of repositories there, right? Some products say SQL Server. You say I download the image, the OS image with the SQL Server. You can you can pull open the signature, and there will be the certificate in it. Sure. So you have this somebody saying, "This is my certificate. The public okay. key is X." Okay. There's no way you can trust just that on face value you got there's no way to say i trust x you establish trust by saying this certificate x public key x chains up to a root which i already trusted right like that root is a public ca for example or that root is my organizational root ca so like there's there's sharp edges here in terms of if you try to take it, make it too easy, it becomes, I just display you information and you say, okay, I trust it because I made some crude estimation that this came from a valid site, et cetera. Normally, like how publishers do it, and there's no standard process. We can talk about standardization, that, that that's a longer discussion, is, is vendors will publish their root certificates on their website, right? Separately, yeah. And they will have their own like different vendors will have different mechanisms, pages, etc. Where they say they say these are my root certificates. I sign my software with this set of certificates. How do you trust that information? You are just trusting that information because it's on their website. So you are saying because this is TLS HTTPS. I went to Microsoft.com or AWS. Dot com. Right. The team that owns this page has put correct information. And you take those certificates, put it in your trust store. Yep. Got so mm -hmm. automating that or standardizing that is it is what I'm saying is it's it's usually a manual one-time process where for your team or organization, you would figure out what are the trusted routes based on the set of software you're going to consume, set it up one time, and then you distribute it. You distribute that trust store to wherever you require it. So you would store it in a central place. And as you set up environments, build environments, or any other environments, you would pull that and add it in your trust store saying, the, this is the set of uh, things that I trust. But what you usually don't do is, you don't do it on the fly as in a developer as as he goes on developing says okay here's my image what is its 
what is the root in the chain and just take that root blindly and add it to your trust store, right? That bypasses the whole mechanism. You have to establish trust for the root separately. Yeah. You can't rely on what's yeah. in the signature and say, well, I'm just gonna trust this. No, I, I, I get it. I get I get your point. I get I get your point. I think um I think that the question is how can you how can you still make the experience ideally standardized? But I mean that's a that's a harder thing. Right, right. Um, that, that, but but, but like like I mean if you look at um, uh, if you compare, we can, like, we can we can talk about some ideas here. But I just want to say that this is a bigger problem to solve. Maybe in the registry right. space there could be a way of saying this is some standard way in which a vendor can publish their root certificates at a particular location, right. making it yeah. easier for tools to discover it. I'm just highlighting that this is a bigger bigger problem because you, you it's not just us, right? Like every right, vendor, no, 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 yeah. no, every vendor has to get through the same, yeah. So, yeah. has to agree to that same process Otherwise, right. this discover doesn't work. Right. No, no, no. I totally, I, I'm with you. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's a longer, the, the standardization industry type thing is a longer, harder thing, but it's, I think, one that is worth, that is worth pursuing um, because uh, I, I, I think it's what's needed, you know, to, to try and make things more secure and you know obviously there's a balance of security and and, and usability right. and, and and trying to balance it out right if 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 it's too hard i mean you know then people end up not using it and um we have we already have other other folks that are making it super easy but it's not also not always the best most secure thing either yeah. so yeah we so, so, talk about it i'm just saying yeah. you, like many of these when you get talk about automation the automation works by because the only thing that is available is the signature, right? Right. In, right. As, right. Yeah. Yeah. Process. So, and you yeah. can't rely on the information from right. the signature to establish that the signature is to be trusted or not. Yep. Yep. You need you need some <laughs> other way to help balance, you know, to, to have a better sense of trust um, yep. and have it come from outside of the thing that's signed versus you know. Right. Just, just take the thing that's signed and be like, well, that's fine. That's it. I'm just going to trust that because it's, it's it's the signed thing. It's like, well, no, you. I mean, you, you know, like I, I should I should be able to go to the the AWS or the Microsoft website to to get the the yep. trusted root certificate that I know that that way I have a better assurance that this thing is validated um, and I can trust it. Right. Yep. Yeah, because if, like if you rely just say a vendor's account in a public registry is compromised, you can put yeah. any signatures, any set of roots in there, right? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, totally, totally. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think uh, I, 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 yeah. So I, I think I guess the why in terms of scoping, right? We have it, it's it's not that this is not um, going to be done at all, but I think like you said, it's a harder problem to solve. Um, and that's why we put it in RC2 versus RC1. All right. So one, one question, right, David and Belen, like uh, if we say that we have uh, a trusted websites, right, that, that can be trusted, uh, then the trust store can have that website and anything that comes from that website uh we can we should be able to store after we read into the trust store because the website itself was trusted in the trust trust store can yeah, that... that is like a that that works for some scenarios okay. that's yeah yeah so so for example browsers etc right they hmm. like there's a mozilla cadb there's a site where public set of public CAs are maintained. There's a trusted source. That is one of the things that we can set up. But this doesn't work for uh, private CAs or organizational CAs. 
it works for public artifacts. Uh, yeah, and it also or, or also least, depends yeah. on also depends on are you getting the certificates from the public CAs or not, which all the vendors may or may not do. Right. Well, I think like I mean, I I think just in my mind, like it would be ideal if there was like let's say we had some standardized way of like hosting a public um, certificate, right? Like. Like if, if you have it in this directory in this structure right over SSL, whatever, you know, whatever those requirements are, um, you know, then we, we set notation to look for that in that directory or that location and that then automates. Right, but, the but, who tells, that. Right, but who tells notation, which is this website to look at? Because well, each right. vendor so will set it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, well, right. And so, like, if you standardize that, and and you know, notation was like, let's say you had notation, uh, a notation command, like, uh, I don't know if it's policy or a trust command, and then you specify the root, like, like registry URL, yep. for instance. Yeah. Um, and then that then goes automatically and pulls down the, the public trust you know, or yep. the and then says yep and adds it into the, the policy and, and then say you trust it now yeah uh, theoretically when you go to the content that's signed from that entity like it should it should work right yeah it yeah. yeah yeah which is again like which is not discovery mm -hmm. which is it's basically a way to automate adding certificates into store end user still provides the location end user is required to validate their putting a correct location or a location that they trust, like a registry URL. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, I, I guess for me, I, I don't, um, I, I'm not like, and maybe just to clarify, like I, I don't see we have a key, to, yeah, we have a key discovery thing. Like I don't, I don't see this as like, we need this generic like public website that is the, the place that holds all the public keys and, and you know, whatever uh, right it's just a it's, it's just a way that like how can we right uh, like yep. point it and at, at a place that we want like red like wabbit networks.io uh, yeah. you know like and then pull the public cert down there and automatically add it into my trust yep. store my trust policy yeah that makes more sense okay all right okay. uh the last item i had was revocation we didn't talk about revocation at all. Um, given that RC, we we still haven't invested in that story. Uh, for RC one, we'll at least have to finalize aspects of revocation support because you can't. The expectation is this, right? Even if we do this in a phased way, signatures generated in RC one. So say we supported revocation in RC2. RC1 signature should be able to support that. Oh, okay. Backward compared. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's the mechanism by which it will happen. At least we need to finalize on that. And again, I think this is a topic to discuss on Monday. Yeah, it looks like we have Signature revocation, future notation CLI, support revocation, revocation, RC2. So things are a little, yeah. And then we have to discuss on both these. So it's a little, yeah, you're right. It needs to be flushed out on what, what are we doing here. Um, I think that's, yeah, that, that's about it. I think otherwise, like most other items we are aligned on the, and like, if we can get through this list and then then we have a list and we can do estimates and try to do the kind of resourcing and how to split the work and come up with dates. Okay. Milind, you gave all the agenda for Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot of stuff to cover here. Right, David. Monday agenda is full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, 
the other thing david is uh, the other day when we were when you were uh, talking about the testing um, you also said that end to end integration testing uh, we need to see what are those scenarios that needs to be covered as part of rc1 Right. Yeah. And I put that note in the, in the issue earlier on the call here. Um, I mean, obviously I just put it rough, but yeah, we need to, we need to flesh out um, the actual test flows that we want to enable, um, you know, because I, I mean, I think that, you know, arbitrarily signing something and then verifying it and making sure that there's success failure would be, you know, something like that would be kind of the bare minimum. Hmm. Um, obviously, like the challenge, and we hit this before, was was that unless you're using a plugin or something else, or you know, you're going to end up using the generate test cert thing, which is okay, um, but obviously is not the necessarily the production type thing you're going to be using per se. Um, so, but that, that that's okay. Um, at least, you know, I, I would expect uh, us and or you know AWS to have your own, you know, test automation flows that do test your kind of more specific implementations um, along with it. You know, but that that's out of scope for for this you know purpose of the call. Okay. Um, actually, David, there's, there's one more item uh, again to be okay. discussed on Monday. This was release gating for like RC, like non alpha, basically stable releases, uh, which is we, we need to go through like the access control on the release process and have a gating step where the project maintainers, right? We have three maintainers. We need to like yeah. have some rules there around like two of the three maintainers or whatever give approval before we make a release. And we can discuss like how tight or flexible we want to make that process. Uh, that is that is one. There's probably another set around like general. Uh, and I think that's related to the uh, how we manage PRs, etc. We did discuss about that with related stuff. Yeah, Milan, we discussed that with Steve the other day, okay. and uh, Steve agreed to that. It's just the since it's manual, it's not automated, right? The cadence itself. Right. Um, we need to see that access control. Uh, how we are going to embed as part of the process itself. Yeah, but what I'm saying is this is what is required for RC1. Right. right. Yeah, so you're just, I mean, you're just, your concern is about um, just the yeah. maintainer approvals before the actual cut of the release. Yeah, we're, we're basically like, who is the set of, this again, like you're, you're taking this like threat, kind of like threat modeling, right? What is required for somebody to make changes and make releases? Can somebody bypass the process? Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know last time it was it was a little it was a little bit of a it was a, it was a bit, a bit rocky. Um, and I I think for RC one, I hope we were in a lot better shape um, there. So I, I, I mean, I think technically the per current release process, you know, you have to file the issue, you have to have people sign off on the main. And I think we did kind of jump the gun a little bit on that. Um, so I think technically there is a process there for the release. And I know for RC1 in particular, because it's a bigger milestone than alpha, um, I, 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 I know we want to stick to more rigor there. No, it's not. I our like I think I would characterize it slightly differently. Like we like we were we were currently doing alpha releases, which is where yeah, we we can have some coordination misses or miscommunication. We can do releases. Uh, I think what the ask here is 
that there be a mechanism, not process, right? There be a mechanism that you cannot bypass. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying. Yeah, you want a technical and it's, and it's barrier. Required. You want a technical barrier from from being able to create a release. Right. And, and, and the, so I I think that uh, that and that's the a big part. Is, I, don't, I don't even know if that exists for GitHub because uh, you you have you have um, like at least for the APIs, right? I mean, it's literally manually create a release, right? And there's not like you either have permissions to create a release or you don't right and, right. and so Again, it's more of a to, it's more of a trust it's more of a trust thing there yeah. right yeah i would like to explore the limit of that and then if if that means like i think like we, we have to think about it a little bit in terms of what is the what is that group ownership of release maintainers and how do we manage that and we keep it to us small set how do we rotate that etc right it's it we, maybe it's not possible to do it to the extent that we want but we should definitely review and see to what extent we can make it tighter yeah yeah i mean right now we have 10 people in the release managers yeah. i don't think we all <laughs> need 10 need to be there totally <laughs> Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I think that's fair. Uh, I, I don't know, um, if we, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we need to bring it up for Monday. We already have a lot of other things that are there. I think, I think this is more of a, as we're closer to RC one type of type of thing. Yeah. I would, I would like to be it included in the scope. We don't need to debate it. Yeah, as long as we can keep it as an item and we make some steady progress or take steps towards it, then it should be fine. Okay, well, yeah, I guess, I, I mean, what are you looking for? Like just reducing the number of people in the release managers? Um, because I, like I said, I mean, we could try and I could try and double check if there's any anything else other than removing permissions, but I, I really don't think I think I, ideal. I think the ideal experience would be when a release is, and you're saying this is probably not possible. I think the ideal experience I'm looking for is all the other steps, etc., get taken, but the final switch can be turned on only after the approval from two of the three project maintainers, like. Justin, Steve, Neil. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the only I think the only thing there that's going to work is just something because I don't I don't think we actually have a uh, an actual dot release document process. I mean, I think there's one, but it's it's more of like technical steps how to release, not a like yeah. here's the it's, requirement thing. And so I, I feel like that's maybe what you're looking for because I, I don't basically... think on a technical level you can you can really. Yeah. Limit you know? I think I'm looking for something like the release gets triggered by a PR submission, right? And then that, that PR would be our release PR, which gets approved by the maintainers. Only maintainers have rights to approve that, something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, we could, I know at least on the notation one, we do release via, via the, an actual, you push a tag. Um, and then it kicks off a release job and then you could have like an approval thing. I mean, so yeah, I guess there is some, some things we could explore, but that's, that's notation. I mean, there's, there's other things you could do for the actual library, but then you would just have to introduce, um, yeah, you have to introduce a, a GitHub action task or something else to do the release for the automation piece. So yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible. You could explore it. Cool, sounds good. That uh, yeah, I think that was my list. <laughs> if something else comes up, I'll bring it up on my. Okay, I, I think it would be good to just like maybe uh, recap all the things we we yeah. want to cover because it seems like there's a lot for next yeah. Monday. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have um, continued um, walkthrough of the CLI um, migration. CLI. Yeah. yeah, the CLI maturity 
pieces, I would say in particular, you know, which, which ones we want to have in scope or not. Um, and then uh, we have the revocation of signatures is another one. Yeah. We have the TSA. We have uh, the stamp authority, the, the notation pull and push. Um, yeah, that we'll cover that. Well, that's part of, that's part of the, yeah, the maturity. Yeah. yeah. Um, was there anything on key discovery that we wanted to talk about? I think well, that's yeah, I think that, I, I think that if we're gonna, I think that if we're gonna try and like, if, if we're gonna say that's gonna be an RC2, I think we can delay that discussion. Right. But if, if you're trying to say that you want it in RC1, then I, we need to talk about it. I, I just think no, that- No, no yeah. that sounds good. We, we'll talk okay. about it in RC2. Uh, okay. Diagnostics logging. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we made some progress. We made some progress on the on the on the dialogue today. I I I think I think if we can just close on it, hopefully it's say yeah, we can just include it and sign and verify, and then that that's fine. Yeah, um, and, and then yeah. if we get, I would keep the gated release process as a last item. If we get time, if we don't, we can just keep, have a tracking item, and then we can cover it next time. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have time for it, but yeah, That's but yeah, I can put a note for, I think maybe it's a week from now uh, conversation. Yeah, um, we talked about yeah. automated CLI testing. Right, we, we did talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, and in and there, I don't know if we need to discuss it next uh, Monday. I think it's just like, we know we it's in scope for RC1. Somebody just needs to go and write out the test case uh, cases flow for it, and then and then that's enough. Yeah, no, I meant from a, like it wasn't in Yee's list, right? Just to get everybody in sync that. Yeah. Items. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. The. I think the I think the one that's that's important um, is this. That we didn't really close on that is important is the the trust store trust policy experience um you know we talked about it and we punted that but that's like if they're currently coding on the trust store cli like we need to talk about what is it that we could make work uh to at least for rc1 to improve the the initial experience um, for people to trust the. I think uh, let let's do this. I'll I'll do a big bit of walkthrough of the trust policy. I want to make sure everybody is on the same page in terms of the trust policy concepts, because that 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 will make for a more productive discussion. Let's start with that, and maybe okay. on Thursday we can dig into that topic deeper. Sounds good. Okay. Million, you said you are going to do the walkthrough on, on yeah which is basically the, there's a spec on it yeah, already yeah. we'll I'll just go through the spec and explain what things look like there are examples etc people can ask yeah. questions right there was one more thing that we discussed i think a couple of weeks ago and i don't know where it is and uh, we said we need to add a document to the notation website about the notation plugin. Basically, how we are supporting the plugin and making it discoverable. Um, I think that's uh, we can debate about that hmm. because, like, then there is like which which set of Plugins because these are vendor plugins, all of, right? So which, right. which plugins yeah. end up there? How do you vet the plugin, etc.? That gets into more trickier questions. I wouldn't have it in RC one, but I'm I'm open to hear opinions. Okay. 
uh, I'm just hacking together the, the flow for Monday. Um, and also, uh, I think on Monday, uh, we were also supposed to look into the like this is post RC one, so we can postpone the discussion. But we were talking about Milin the faster dev build, which is uh, improve the match process and also the automated build and release kind of thing. But it was only discussed as part of post RC one. Sorry, I didn't get that. Can you repeat it? This is the this is one of the discussion that we did. I think on. Uh, the last week of August meeting, where yeah. we discussed about uh, to have more faster dev build by improving the merge process and also automating the build and release. Let's see, we can touch upon that. Um, I, I don't have a good sense of the concerns there. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Anything else? David? No, no, we're good. Yeah, I'm. I'm just putting putting the flow together for for Monday. Um, I think I think we're pretty good. I think we have plenty plenty to cover. Um, <laughs> sure. So. You are updating the agenda. Once you update, I will go ahead and uh, uh, look into it to see if there is anything missing. I'm going to add some few things. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Milan. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye.